Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode seven. Unfortunately, our guest that we were going to have on was not able to make it. Uh, we will have that episode at a future date on homeschooling. So you can find us at uh, iTunes, Stitcher, and um, on the Seeds of Liberty dot com. So today we're going to talk about money, the beautiful world of dirty green paper notes what people think as money so we're gonna, we'll, we'll discuss you know money versus currency quantitative easing mandric mechanism and possibly uh delve into the um the spike gore filled pit of the federal reserve that almost nobody seems to know anything about however it's written on the very paper that we transact with every single day <laughs> so it might be a good idea that you know what it is um so so the way I like to talk about money when I discuss this with people is um, usually I take out a, a dollar bill and I try to explain, do you know what the words on this means, right? So you have, you know, at the top of the uh, Federal Reserve note, right? What does that mean? What is the Federal Reserve and what is a note, right? And, you know, basically the Federal Reserve is a, um, it's a private corporation, but it's more fascistic in nature since it has complete you know, uh, inextricable ties to government, specifically the federal government, um, and it's owned by you know foreign international bank banksters um, that uh, is it has the authority to print currency and enslave the future population, future generation at the uh, at the um, you know for the benefit of the present generation. Um, and so then you have that... no. Say again. No, the 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 point about the Federal Reserve. I've always wondered, and maybe you can answer this better. The reason that it's a fascist, um, it's a fascist uh, situation, is because it is a private company or a private corporation. It's not a state-ran bank, right? Because if it was a state-ran central bank, it would be a communist. Um, yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah, because I mean, the, I mean, you know the manifesto calls for the communist. Karl Marx called for a state ran central bank right yeah yeah so yes. it's i'm it's, reading if uh, i'm yeah, thinking yeah, back correctly i think a lot of people um say that they just say that it's a private um how you say yeah like it's owned it's a private corporation owned privately but that's not true because you know if it's privately it would be considered a free market right but it's not it's it's a it's you know the merger of corporate and state right it's it's, it's fascistic in nature um and and it's completely authorized and it, it, it has complete immunity from what it does do, and from by regulated the federal, <laughs> by the federal government, yeah. Um, so yeah, so so I know you know I talk about money versus currency. What's the difference between money and currency? Everybody confuses the two, um, you know. And, and and there's basically um, four um, four characteristics that currency has, right? It's uh, div divisibility, fungibility, um, durability, and port portability. And uh, and then the um, every you know er anything that's used as currency in history, you know. For a long period of time, had to have um, um, how do you say uh, had to had those defining f characteristics, right? And then money is fundamentally different because on top of those four characteristics, it is a store of value over a long period of time. And historically, only uh, gold and silver has achieved that supreme status, right? Because it's it's been used for at least like five thousand years and two thousand years more heavily. Uh, from the, uh, I, I believe, is the Lydians in ancient Greece. So, I think uh, I think uh, ammunition is is creeping up there too as a currency. Ammunition. Well, yeah. I mean, depending on where you are. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that have been used as currency, like you know, tobacco, salt, lumber, spices, sugar, whiskey, <laughs> exotic, exotic bird feathers, beads. You know, seashells, shells, seashells. Yeah. yeah. You know, various kinds of rocks, but. Um, but you know they and they've come and gone due to various reasons, like you know, you, because a currency has to has to have those things, and and also it has to be sufficiently scarce and rare, right? Because if it's too widely available, it's basically worthless, right? So it has to be sufficiently scarce. So so if you have seashells, you can't be living near the seashore, right? <laughs> Transacting at seashells, you have a big wave, and all of a sudden everyone's savings are worthless, right? <laughs> so w wake up in the morning, run to the bank, just go to the beach, everybody go to the yeah. beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah and, and even gold and silver is not necessarily immune to to that that phenomenon, right? Because if you have you have an asteroid that hits Earth full of gold and silver, hey, you have hyperinflation, gold and silver is automatically overnight worthless, right? So it's not itself immune, but just for now, it seems like it's the best um, possible uh, candidate for being money, 
so at this point so what, what would you would you add anything to that jeremy most people like you said they don't they don't even realize much less the difference between money and currency they don't understand what the federal reserve is um you know most people are relatively economically illiterate actually um i, I know i was before i i started going down this path a few years ago um, because you grow up th learning about money, um, what you're taught is, you know, this here, you know, this piece of paper is worth something. Well, how it how it gains that worth, you're never really told. You're just told that it's, you know, it's a dollar. It's worth a dollar, and you compare it to things you can purchase for that. And as a kid, you know, you you may get an allowance. Or, you know, your parents may let you do a little odd jobs around the house to make a little money to go buy, you know, comic books or, or um, baseball cards or whatever the kids are actually doing these days. I'm thinking about back to my childhood. I don't know if kids these, these days still do those things. Um, Buy, buying 8-tracks, you know. Tracks, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, I'm not that old. No. Hey, I had baseball <laughs> cards. I know what you're talking about. I'm not. I mean, <laughs> no, I, I well, I, I, I wasn't referring to us when I said that. But, but I had, the, I had the, the um uh, the the Mark McGuire rookie card, man. Before he got before he had a needle in every vein. <laughs> no, no, no. That was that was never proven. <laughs> yeah, you're right. My bad. Sorry, Mark. But but you're, I you're my hero. Um. So the the point is, you know, you're not you're. I'd say purposely not told what money actually is, um, or or currency, or or any of that. You're just taught that this is the you know uh, the the paper dollars that your parents give you, or that you see other people have, that is important to some extent, and that gets you things. Um, and most people never progress past that. That's that's what they were taught. They know that they can exchange it for certain things, um, and they know that the prices seem to go up on certain things as they get older. But mm -hmm. a lot of people don't question why these things happen. Um, all of that, of course, is tied to the Federal Reserve. And, you know, as you were saying, it is, I think fascistic is, is the best term for it. Um, I, I find, you know, most people that, that will say it's, you know, you were saying some people say it's, well, oh, it's, it's private, it's private. Um, you know, most people don't even realize what it is, but the ones who do, a lot of them who who will argue with you that it's oh, it's a private, it's a private thing. That's not the government is not involved in any way. Those are usually um, I find a lot of progressives are like that. They just because they are anti corporation altogether. Uh, yeah, it's not it's, for the it's same. E it's evil because it's private, basically, right? Ex exactly. They're they're not against they're not against corporations for the reasons we are, or you know, I, I hate this. I hate to use the collective we, but <laughs> the three of us I know we're all pretty much in agreement that the only reason we're against corporations is because they're a, a state. You know, they're a function of the state. They're 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 a, f a fiction, uh, a legal fiction created by the state. Uh, that's the only reason we're against them in, on principle. Um, but these type, these people, you know, like I said, a lot of them on the left, they're against private businesses in general. They think they're the most evil thing that could ever happen. You know, the evil monopolies will take over and stuff like that. So they see profit the private, is evil. <laughs> exactly. So they see the the private nature of it, and they don't want to think past that. They just want to think, oh. Evil, evil, evil private corporation. You know, if if they're against it, that's why. Um, but they'll argue with you on the fascistic nature because, well, they like government. You know, that that's kind of what makes them progressives. <laughs> they're they're pretty hardcore statists, and they're always wanting to use government in different ways to better their situation. Um, but you know, like I said, most people just they, the majority of people don't even know what it is. Um, or if they do, it's, oh, that's where the money comes from. But like you were saying, you know, you, you do, I think you do a really good job of introducing people to that with, you know, what you were saying with the dollar bill and everything, because you asked them and, and well, where do you go from there? Okay. Well, where do they, you know, where do they get that money? Oh, they print it. You know, most people will understand that. Although, you know, we joke about it, you know, they don't really print it. It's like all digital now. It's not like they have the printing presses going like they used, you know, the actual printing presses like they used to. Um, which makes it even scarier because now they can literally, with the touch of a button on a computer, can uh, create <laughs> millions upon millions and millions of dollars. And the average person thinks that, oh, that's a great thing. You know, like when the, when the stimuluses came out and, and, and everybody was given f 
free money from the government. Mm. You know, most people were ecstatic about that. I was still in my minarchist phase, but even I had to question. I actually, I think I only ended up cashing it because I was dead broke at the time and I had like car problems, but I actually considered just ripping it up and I didn't know why. It just struck me as weird that the government could just hand me money. <laughs> um, but most people didn't even question that. They were like, ooh, free money, yay. You know, that, that, that sort of ties back into our, our conversation last week about taxation, the same thing. You, you get a tax refund, yay, free money. It was yours. <laughs> oh, <laughs> never mind. Um, but with the, with, with the Fed <laughs> and, and their printing, you know, like I said, people, they print money and people are like, yeah, it's great. They can keep printing money. And I think, Dave, you mentioned it, le you mentioned it last week about the one congressman or senator who was saying that they, we don't, it was a congressman, I think, right? That said, that, oh, we, we don't even need to tax people anymore. We can just print money. A lot of people think that. A lot of people think you can just print and print and print because they don't understand that the only thing. I think, I think he is speaking truth as long as the government is willing to enforce that and basically wipe off any government in the world that will not – that tries to trade oil outside of the petrodollar. So as long as – as long as the currency is propped up by the by, – by oil um, and the oil-bearing nations or the nations that are, are buying and trading oil only trade in the dollar, I, I don't think there – it matters how many dollars there are because – Oil is what runs the world right now, unfortunately. So I say that unfortunately. I mean, we can get into a different discussion about that. But, you know, it's one of those things where that is kind of a scary thought. I mean, if a congressman can basically just come out and say, hey, yeah, we don't need one tax dollar from anybody. We could just print and do whatever the hell we want. So it's, it's like, okay. <laughs> Why am I paying my taxes? Why are you, why are we, you know, what, what is the border matter? What is universal health care matter? If you can just print up money and pay doctors, then what the hell does it matter? You know, and, and obviously there's some, some issues there, but, uh, you know. Some. <laughs> but, yeah, of course, there's a ton, but, you know, the, the Federal Reserve. The well, so, um, so yeah, that, that's, that's, you know, one way. The Federal Reserve is it's a great way to describe money because like I, I do hear a lot of people say, you know, okay, you say, Where does this come from? Okay, the government. All right, so so they just make money? Yeah, they just make <laughs> So how does <laughs> how does that work? Like how does somebody just make money? Isn't that the same thing as counterfeiting? Well, no. <laughs> Why? Because, you know, they have special ink and stamps. <laughs> It's it's legal, <laughs> you know, and uh, and I think well, people, they pass they yeah, pass the law <laughs> because they pass the law, right? Yeah, and uh, and you know, like inflation, it's a great it's a great topic. You know, people, you know, I, I love to ask that people. You know, what is inflation? And and what's what's the first thing most people say is inflation is rising prices, right? I hear that all the time. Inflation is rising prices, and because that's all they see is the effect of it, right? And then I'm always correcting. That's a great introduction for a little economics lesson. No, inflation is not just rising prices. That's the distant effect. The beginning is mandrake mechanism or currency creation or just creating money out of thin air, right? In the in the um, modern money mechanics, right? Um, I think it was uh, print, uh, made by the uh, Boston Federal, Boston branch of the Federal Reserve, 1952, I believe. Um, they state clearly, clearly that when a private citizen writes a check. He must have money in the bank to back up that check. When the Federal Reserve writes a check, it is creating money. <laughs> He's stated in no uncertain terms. And yet, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares at all. As if yeah, yeah. It's just Would you play Monopoly? <laughs> what was that the other day? Would you play Monopoly if I got to write, you know, t basically say however much money I got and you had to play by the rules? Yeah, yeah. Of if course not. If you were playing with somebody who can just create money for themselves, <laughs> would you would you continue to play with them? <laughs> you know, and uh, and then another another great uh, way to visualize inflation. I think uh, Milton Friedman said it's like um, it's not like you know you're pouring water into a bathtub and it just evenly disperses throughout the bathtub. No, inflation is like you take a, a, a dollop of honey and you just put it in a dish, and it just sticks there. 
And <laughs> that's what happens. It, it goes to specific sectors of society and it only spreads very slowly, ever so slowly. And so by the time the rest of us get it, the rest of the little people get it, prices already have gone way up. Right. So so we don't feel the benefits of that money. But the people who are given the money first, who are usually the special interest groups, you know, um, you know, the uh, you know, big agriculture, big biotech, big, big banks, big, uh, big oil, big energy. They are able to buy real things in the real market with this created fake money. Right. Um, and, and I think um, I think the, uh, the statistic is like it's, it's about three percent of the of the money in circulation is actually physical coins and bills. The rest of it is just electronic, you know, things on a screen, which uh, which is kind of interesting too. I think I think some people have that have that um, argument for Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin is just digital, it's just things on a screen. Like why do you trust Bitcoin over you know the banks? And if if your primary issue is that you know it's electronic, but the whole you know it's a different idea. So what would you say to those yeah. people, some people like that, Jeremy? Well, I mean, to answer that question directly, the, my first response is because it's decentralized, you know, Bitcoin versus the electronic, you know, Federal Reserve notes. Um, you know, it's it's not consolidated into the hands of, of one group or one individual. Um, that's that's the part of the design. Um, it doesn't have, you know, Bitcoin doesn't currently have anything backing it other than reputation basically uh, you know and it's gaining purchasing power um but it technically doesn't have anything backing it you know that that goes it ties into the 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 federal reserve notes you know the fact that they're able to print it literally out of fit thin air it's because there there's nothing backing it the only the only thing that backs the the quote unquote money of the united states is the mythical full faith and credit of said united states you know and you you mention these things you know, hardcore statists who are very nationalistic or that what they would consider patriotic would get defensive and say, well, that matters, you know, the full faith and credit. Because you ask them, what does that actually mean? What, what does the full faith and credit of a country mean? And they, can, they can't even answer that question, you know. In reality, it's pretty simple. It, it's just one giant IOU. Hey, yeah, I'll get you back. <laughs> That's what that means, the full faith and credit. We're... Uh, you know, it's based it's based off the economy, supposedly, you know, based off like the GDP and stuff, um, which is basically the citizens effort and future efforts. That's what's used as the currency, you know, which ties into our previous conversations about being slaves because you you are in that situation. Your your future earnings and your children's future earnings. That's what the full faith and credit is based on, because the government, any government doesn't have any money. You know, you were saying how some people will say, oh, the government, you know, the government, you know, the government prints the money and yeah, they can just make it. Well, because yeah, they don't have any money of their own. Every bit of money that government, any government ever attains has to be first taken from somebody else, usually through force of some sort of another. Um, so they don't have anything. You know, there was a time when the, the money in this country was backed by gold and silver uh, and you know at least then there was some control where the people you know there was something tangible behind it there was you know because gold does have it you know gold has an intrinsic value and it's as you said it's been used as you know it's been used as a currency and as as real money uh, for thousands of years um, but when that was taken away you know that happened incrementally um, you know, from the start of the Federal Reserve in 1913, and then um, what was it Roosevelt started to? You know, for first Roosevelt stole all the gold. <laughs> Bank of Britain <laughs> he, as well. Yeah. He, he he literally stole everybody's Bank gold. They, if, if you they, like, if you like your gold, you can keep your gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. That's pretty much yeah. I I don't even th I don't even think he made those promises. Um, <laughs> No, but that which tie, which ties back <laughs> to, to another previous conversation we had about you know that, the, uh, government learning and, and <laughs> that's why that's why Obama learned now that he can say you know you can keep it. FDR didn't even say it. He just they just came up with some cockamamie scheme why why they had to give their gold over and they just passed a law and said everybody had to turn over their gold. Um, you know which and so that'll never people, happen now, man. Come on. 
<laughs> the past you can't go with what happened in the past yeah come on yeah. well they could do it again but mo you know much of the gold since then unfortunately has has shifted into the hands of the people behind the scenes running the governments across the world you know the central banks they have a lot they have most of it um and small you know little people like us are hoarding it whenever we can <laughs> um but most of it is already out of our hands uh until more is mined and and we can you know do something about that but the the point was that you know they they took that he took it away and then nixon severed all ties with it what was that 71 somewhere around there uh, <clears throat> where he severed where he severed ties from the uh, gold standard altogether and from that point on the money was literally backed by nothing fiat, and fiat. Fiat. yeah it became it became pure pure fiat currency where they can print it and again most people just assume oh the you know the government's in charge of money so the treasury or now the federal reserve is printing the money so that's that's money so they print it they give it to us you know not realizing as you were saying about inflation how every time they add more uh you know every time they increase the money supply it causes the value of the money already in existence to drop there's there's no way around that once once you have a currency that has nothing backing it other than some mythical credit um when you increase the supply it naturally the 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 the, the purchasing power naturally naturally has to drop i mean most estimates say that the i think the purchasing power has dropped they, they say somewhere around like 95 percent since the creation of the federal reserve and much of that uh, was escalated after the the full severing from the gold standard. Yeah. Uh, like you know, it's it slowly decreased between 1913 and 1971, and then it's just mm -hmm. all downhill in the last 40 plus years. Yeah. Um, but again, getting people to even get that far is is a, is a tough task because um, you know it's either they they believe the government has the legal right to print money, so that's what that's what they're going to use and they won't bother to question it or they'll think they'll you know they'll they'll be the anti corporation people the anti private people who just want to have their government control the money supply you know nobody wants to think that it's it, it could possibly be worthless cuz that's a scare you know that's a scary proposition they 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 want to look at the propaganda that that goes through the media and stuff and anybody that's hoarding gold or silver is crazy um, or an extremist, uh, you know, or these days basically a terrorist, um, you know, any politician or per perspective politician who talks about even auditing the Fed or returning to the gold standard is immediately mocked and ridiculed, and uh, and that's what the majority of the people see, and so they don't they don't bother to get back into this. They're just like gold. Oh, who needs that? I got money. I got you know. I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a, I got a pocket full of these. I'm good to go. <laughs> Yeah. There's also this, this, I don't know how to say it right, systemic uh, idea. There you go. There's this systemic idea that money is evil. And uh, yeah, that's held by a lot of people on the left, uh, you know, the more communist leaning statist. Um, they, they're, they're the same people that say guns are evil or, or, or you know, weed is evil or this is evil or that is evil it's like uh, a inanimate object cannot be inherently evil like money is a tool uh, guns are a tool a hammer is a tool I mean you know the reason money was created in, in humanity in the world was to provide ease between transactions you know so you didn't have to trade your bushel of hay for a goat well if the guy didn't want a bushel of hay but you really needed that goat you could sell your bushel of hay to someone get money and give him the money which he could go trade for whatever else a lot of people don't look at it that way they think money is the root of all evil but I like to say that fiat is if you're going to call something evil, fiat is definitely evil because it tricks people into thinking that things are, are worth stuff when they're not. It's like the whole world's believing, or especially America, but the whole world, any any country with a, a central bank, 
it's like they've tricked everyone into believing a lie uh, that that this is actually worth something. And you know, I don't I don't know what to tell people. I don't know what to say. I don't I don't know acquire stuff that you can barter with for the fiat collapse. I don't. I I wouldn't worry until either two things: the 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 oil runs out in the world, <laughs> uh, or um, you start seeing alternative energies that the dollar can't control come about. Uh, that's when I would probably say dump, dump, dump. But you have to realize that every dollar that the Fed prints up or makes is 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 also going to use to kill brown people in other countries uh, with drones and, and soldiers and, and bombs and you know uranium tipped bullets and 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 etc 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 you know the the war war isn't cheap but when you can print infinite amount of money it becomes free and uh you know most um <laughs> i don't know if america has solved the problem of empires dying due to continual war by the central bank mo model or um if uh it's an inevitability that a central bank and a, a fiat currency will collapse any government. There's a there's a, a guy that that got I got really uh, into before I started learning about volunteerism. His name is Mike Maloney, and his uh, his book is called Rich Dad Guides to Preci uh, Investing in Precious Metals. And it's a pretty uh, dreary title, but very fascinating, intriguing book. Uh, and I recommend it to everybody who wants to learn about monetary system, Federal Reserve, precious metals, and how the economy works. I learned so much. And basically, you know, one thing that when I first got into this stuff, I was, you know, uh, looking at Ron Paul a lot and Peter Schiff. And one thing they talk about a lot is the economic collapse, which to me is more like, I look back on it now, it's like doom porn. You know, you're looking at, it, oh my God, economic collapse, economic collapse. I got to, you know, hoard food, hoard water, hoard gold, hoard, hoard silver, right? And, uh, and you're just full of fear. Um, but what Mike Maloney taught was more like, um, first of all, he kind of redefined it as being a wealth transfer. And I like that term better, wealth transfer, because that's essentially what currency creation or the Mandrake Mechanism, which essentially Mandrake Mechanism is the same thing. It's just referring to, I think this was coined by G. Edward Griffin in his book, Creature from Jekyll Island. There was a magician in the 1940s who basically can, you know, <laughs> had, a, had the, had the uh, so-called ability to, uh, you know, make things appear and disappear at will. So, <laughs> so hence the Mandrake Mechanism for the Federal Reserve. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so he coined this term, uh, the wealth transfer, because as the Federal Reserve prints more currency the fun the effect is that it it's it only gets its value by stealing value from currency in existence right so it is it is a thief a thief of value and so and then whenever you give this this newfound uh robbed uh stolen currency to the special interest groups you are transferring the wealth from the middle class, the peop the productive class, the industrious, the people who actually produce things of value, you're transferring that to the special interest groups and through the government, to the military and industrial complex, to you know every single uh, connected uh, co corporate fascistic interest that uh, is that that exists, right? So that's essentially what happens, and and so he basically shows these he calls them wealth cycles, right? How you know you just look. Look, since you know, we call you can also call them boom bust cycles, right? Since the Federal Reserve was created, you know, you look at the different uh, the different times of the booms, which would be you know, the first boom would be like the 1920s, the roaring 20s, and then you know, all that printing, um, you know, resulted in the in the collapse of 29, and then as because basically they couldn't redeem all of the the notes back into gold as they as it was, it was it was um, um, one, I believe it was. One ounce of gold was good, uh, equal to fifty dollars, right? So, so the the conversion was one ounce of gold equals a fifty dollar bill, right? Fifty dollar, you can go to any bank, any bank or Federal Reserve branch, bring a fifty dollar bill, and get your one ounce of gold, and that effectively ended with FDR's New Deal, uh, right when he right when he did the executive order to confiscate um, and nationalize the gold uh, from the people. It was essentially the first bailout of the Federal Reserve, and that was the first wealth cycle, and then. And then you had the Bretton Woods um, 
system, which was, um, you know, the, the Federal Reserve was the, um, the, uh, the the currency that tied all the other currencies, and then and then back the, the, the dollar was backed by gold, and and then and then uh, eventually that was inflated <laughs> because people, you know, the, the governments tried to comp tried to, uh, you know, they say, you know what, we don't trust the Federal Reserve anymore. You're printing so much money, give me my gold back, and so. And so I think uh, in the late 1960s they were they were giving the gold back to these countries like different countries like uh, France and uh, and a few other countries, Germany. And, yeah, probably Germany a little bit. And then and then finally the Federal Reserve knew that it didn't have enough gold to redeem for all of the 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 banknotes that it issued. And so in 1971 Nixon comes out and says, you know what, we're going to sever the gold window. Nobody else can redeem your notes. Everybody has just fiat currency from now on. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the greatest, the greatest heist in uh, in history, and nobody was punished. Nobody was, you know, imprisoned. Nobody was arrested. Nobody was. Just, they effectively stole the gold from all of these nations that thought that their currency was backed by by gold. Well, not their currency. Their, the the dollars that they had in their vaults was backed by gold. They thought, and now it's just pieces of paper, it's essentially worthless pieces of paper. And then right after that, oh. the, the other wealth cycle, the, uh, the, it was like a near, it was like the, the big hype, the inflation of the 1970s, roaring, um, um, you know, prices going up and, and then that kind of stabilized. And, and yeah, so, so, it, so it's really fascinating. You, you look in history as these, these wealth cycles happen and you can see, um, you can see the prices of commodities. And, and that's the other amazing thing is gold, it's just a commodity. It's just like... It's just like wheat or like, you know, um, like food, like coffee, like anything that's traded, gold and silver is just a commodity. It happens to be the commodity that we use to facilitate trade. But again, when you when you go and buy, uh, like, like if you go to the precious metal store, you say you buy gold, you're, you know, you're using your money to buy gold. And, and then, or if let's say they pay you in gold, again, you're just using your thing, your product or service to buy money. And then you can use that money to buy something else. Right, or if you go and work for somebody and they pay you in money, you're using your services to buy money. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting way to look at it. I like to look at it that way as a commodity, just like any other commodity. It's just something that's it. Its usefulness is in trade. That's it. That's it. Like you said, Dave, it's just a tool. So, yeah, it just yeah. drives me nuts when the the left. Well, I don't want to say the left because that makes me sound like I'm on the right. Um, when the com the commies say. You know, money is the root of all evil, and you know, down with the banks and down with this. And I go, okay, find me a bank that isn't propped up by government. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying that we should get rid of government because they prop up the banks, the evil banks. No, well, we got to have government. Okay, all right, my bad. And I just turn around, and walk away. Yeah, well, most of them that say, you know, money is the root of all evil, that's that's been beaten into their heads and that's, you know, you, th that goes along with hating the greedy capitalists and, uh, you know, the, the corporations that destroy the world. It, it's all rhetoric and propaganda that people have been fed their entire lives so they don't question it. Um, but again, as both of you said now, it's, it, it is, money is, all it is, it's a medium of exchange. And, you know, a lot of the people that, a lot of the uh, people you're referring to, Dave, who say that, that it's the root of all evil, um, you know. So I've heard a lot of them say that, you know, we, we can just go back to barter, and it's like, well, no, that that doesn't work on a large scale. That's kind of why money was created, as you said, in the first place. Um, you know, personally, on you know, for my business, I started offering barter as a as a option, a payment option for my clients, but that's just me, one guy running his own company. You know, and I don't do it with everybody because the problem, as you said, becomes you have to find a trading partner who will take what you have to offer in return for what you want or go find a middleman or two or three to be able to trade back and forth to get, which becomes extremely uh, time consuming. Uh, it also creates usually storage issues because you have to have a lot of something sometimes to be able to trade it for what you want of something else. Um, depending on what the value is determined at, um, but people don't want to, you know, they they just they just they hear money's evil. They 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 are told to hate the rich. Um, the rich have money. That must be the problem. Um, yeah, and like you know, get fine. Let's take all let's take all the quote unquote money 
out of the way and see how long you survive. You won't be able to, most people won't be able to figure out how to deal with that. Um, what do you they, own that you could trade? Yeah. A lot, a lot of people aren't, you know, you were talking about the, you know, the, the, both of you were talking about the, the well, the doom porn of the, you know, the economic collapse. <laughs> um, it, it is, I mean, I've joked about it before in past episodes, but the, the threat of, of, of a Weimar Republic situation happening here is, is always present. Um, you know, it, it's, it's almost unavoidable when you continue to print money out of nothing. Um, eventually you will reach that point where hyperinflation will happen. Um, they are just, they've gotten, you know, government and, and the banks have gotten smarter about it and figured out ways to stave it off for longer and longer and longer. Um, so, you know, you, it, it is a good idea to prepare as if it's going to happen. You know, I, I don't, you know, like you said, the, the, the people that promote the doom porn, uh, the doom porn for that stuff, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying you should go hardcore into it, but uh, I, I tell people all the time it's a good idea. You know, I try to get my friends and family to do it. Uh, just, you know, when you have a couple of, you know, even if you just want to start with silver, if, you know, you got these days, it's still, the price is still hovering, what, around 17, somewhere in that yeah, neighborhood? It's, it's 15, um, 80, something like that. Oh, it's very, even lower very now. Very cheap. It's very cheap. It's I, unnaturally cheap. <laughs> well, yeah, with good time to buy. Um, oh yeah. But you know, you, if you if you end up with like you know forty, fifty, sixty extra bucks one week or two, just toss it and pick you know pick it up and just stockpile some. Because I'd say the same it, with Bitcoin as well. Well, any any yeah. anything that's not the U.S. dollar yeah. is a is a good idea to look at. You know, Ooh, um, I got to get well, my Canadian dollars. Oh yeah, well, no, I'm kidding. Any, I'm kidding. Any, yeah, I'm kidding. Any, I'm kidding. Any, any fiat currency is a bad idea. Um, no, but yeah, gold, silver, Bitcoin. Um, like you, I mean, you made that. You you said ammunition. Yeah, it's true. Things like that, because as we as as you said earlier, Daniel, all the different things that have been used in the past. It's just a matter of what the people at the time decide on has value and they're willing, you know, as you said, if it's a, if, it, if the more scarce it is, the better, because that means the you know, it can retain its price prices longer. So, you know, so, stock- side note, if you are thinking about stockpiling ammo, 22 long rifle, <laughs> that's what you need to be buying. Not nine millimeter, 45, uh, just 22. That's that's I think that's going to that's like already underground currency and <laughs> for some of my friends. So, uh they'll they'll trade you whatever you want for that 22 long rifle <laughs> and yeah, ammo. It's it's hard well it's, it, for a long time it was hard to come by up here, so Well, yeah, I think that the idea is right is it doesn't really matter what you have if everything collapses. But if you have a gun, you can pretty much get anything you want. I, I know that like completely destroys the idea of the, the non-aggression principle and all that. Um, but if someone else has a gun and they have no ammo, they're going to trade you what they can to get that ammo. Um, if someone's threatening you and you have ammo, then you can defend yourself. Uh, it's uh, it, there's a a lot of you know things that people don't think about how useful you know. Just even like uh, silver and gold and, and Bitcoin and stuff like uh, stuff like that can just really give you some kind of safety net if you know like your your bank account means nothing. But uh, what you were you were saying about the uh, you know getting out of fiat is um, is there any is there anything that you could think of that that people like that, all right. See, people think that there's this idea that there's a safe alternative, right? And there's no such thing as a safe alternative, right? So there's nothing you can do. You can only take risks. It's that freedom, too, that we were talking about. Mm-hmm. And, and you can either hedge your bet that your dollars are going to be worth something in 10, 20, 6 months, or you're, he- or you're heading... Or, or, or you can hedge your bet on stuff that is being proved time and time again that is people will accept. I mean, I don't think there's anybody in this this country right now that if you had an ounce of gold on you and you walked up to them and they had dollars on them and you said, I will trade you this ounce of gold for this amount of dollars, they wouldn't just do it because they know that gold's going to be worth that. 
Actually, I would have to challenge that point. I believe Mark Dice did a video. Yeah, on I, that, I was going to say, he, I, saw he, the, I saw those where videos. He's, <laughs> he's, he stood at, like, I, I think you're, you're right on a, on a large scale, Dave, but there, there are people that actually have no clue that gold is anything other than something they would put in jewelry or that quote unquote gangsters use on their teeth. Like, honestly, <laughs> there are, that, that video was, was hysterical. It was. He stood I haven't out seen it. That, he stood I'll out you, front of this. <laughs> he he stood out front of a you know a gold a gold and silver dealer, with where it was a one ounce gold coin, right? One ounce Canadian maple leaf. Yeah, nine 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 point nine 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 pure. Yeah, gold. yeah, yeah, yeah. Worth. I mean, an ounce right now is still going for what twelve? Yeah, at that, at that, time, like that? At that time it was like fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So it, at the time it was fourteen hundred. I think he was offering it to people for like a hundred dollars no, no, or no, something no, no, no. ridiculous. No, no, no. The the face value. Okay. So every oh, every, that's every, right. Every gold coin and silver coin has has uh, has supposed like legal tender value, right? So like a, a, an American eagle, uh, it says one dollar, right? Uh, so so theoretically, let, let's say you know I asked I asked remember asking the guy, well, what does that mean? Why does it say one dollar? Well. If there's no money, if something happens to our currency, you can trade this for one dollar, right? <laughs> and the same thing with with gold. Like gold has fifty dollars as legal tender status, right? But so and so and so, Mark Dice was going around to the people and saying, you know, I I got this for fifty dollars, but you know, I really want to get rid of it. I'll sell it to you for twenty five. Would you take it? <laughs> you know, they're like, nah, I don't need gold. And he's like, oh, you got too much gold at home? Yeah, I got too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people. Yeah, that that's what it was. People I don't know. There's there's a there's like some random dude walks up to you on the street and says, "Hey, I have a pure gold coin. You're gonna they, no you're gonna most say, people don't care. It's a really you're, no. You're st- no no no. You're you're, you're not. Oh think, no, you're, you're, definitely, you're, you're, you're too naive here. You're you're, you're not no, thinking of being swindled. We're not. <clears throat> we're not. No, I, I, I some I, random I, guy walks up and goes, "I have a." Right, a one ounce silver piece that I will sell you for fifty dollars. No, okay, Dave. I'm like, can we go get this verified? Okay. Well, yeah, it's okay. See, you didn't let us finish the story, Dave. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> he was he was purposely doing it outside of a gold and silver dealer because when the person initially balked, and whether it was because they thought, like you said, a scam right away or something like that, he said, "We can go in right now, yeah. and they can." Ver- He's like, if you want, we can go inside right now, and these people in this in this gold and silver store can verify that it's worth. And I mean, dude, I'm you're sure you're still gonna think that they're running a racket. Does, dude, it, people wouldn't even I consider would, it. I would consider okay. it. I'd, I'd say I'll give you one dollar for that. I like, I, I like, I, one of my favorite ones. He goes to a like a taco stand. He tries to pay for his taco with like a what was it like a one ounce gold coin. He's like, do you guys accept this? <laughs> they're like, no, 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 only dollars. <laughs> only dollars. <laughs> and and uh, yeah, it's really amazing. Like like one woman, I remember he's like he's like, I'll trade you this for twenty five dollars. No no no. All right, ten. No no. All right, give me that bottle of water and I'll give this. T- no, <laughs> I don't want it. Yeah, and if you was to walk up, if I was to walk up and be like, that's worth twelve hundred dollars, she would be like, yeah, here, have whatever I got. If she yeah, knew, well, yeah, that's the whole idea. But the the the, the point is that, that it's even if even if they do think it's a scam, people just they don't recognize that because just as as the other example Danilo is bringing up, people they're trained to think that the dollar is the only thing that matters. That you know what what people you know we we talked about FDR and how he literally just stole the gold from citizens. Most people on the left and the right i know a lot of them who think fdr was a swell guy and uh you know because they believe they well they 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 were indoctrinated just like just like we were um you know and you learn in school that the new deal was a wonderful thing and every and and how how fdr got us through the depression and 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 helped us you know and 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 held out on of the war as long as he could and only brought it only came in at the last minute and because of that then you know that that helped the economy and you know people believe these lies so when they look at FDR taking the gold they don't see it as this theft what it actually was they think good guy must have had good reasons okay Nixon comes along. You know, you were saying earlier, Danilo, how nobody got punished. Yeah, punished. Jeez, outside of Nixon getting tripped up in the Watergate sc- scandal, aside from that, they were the people. All the people involved were lauded for what they did. <laughs> you know, people, there's there's like monuments built to some of these people. It's crazy because no nobody understands what actually happens. So you know, like I said, that's that's one thing. A lot of people, even people who will 
you know, status who would be down on Nixon because of, you know, the other things he did, will still look at him removing the gold standard and thinking that's a good thing because that's been beaten into their head that, you know, the it's better to have, you know, at one point the US Treasury and now the Federal Reserve. It's better it's better to have this one entity in charge and, and giving us this this quote unquote legal tender, uh, which again is just so so laughable because where did they get the authority to make this legal tender? They just plucked it out of thin air and said, yes, we can do this. <laughs> we can print money, you know, which gets back into the, what you were saying about how, the, uh, Danilo, you were saying how the, you know, the Federal Reserve not only prints money out of nothing, but when it writes checks, it creates money out of nothing, um, you know, because part of the whole system is that for every dollar that it loans out, it's allowed to what? Make nine, and it's allowed to print nine into yeah. existence that's, that's, out of literally nothing. Yeah, it's the fraction of reserve lending. So, yeah. yeah. But that, that's all part of it. So every time, every t- you know, and that's, well, because it's, t- it's tied to, the, the banks are tied to this, the, yeah. the Federal Reserve because they, that's where they get their money from. They, have the, they open and close the money windows when they, when they feel necessary, you know, and when the, the bigger banks who are connected, like the, the chases and stuff like that, when things start to happen, what it, look, look, look what happens. They get bailed out with more fake money, <laughs> um, which just decreases the wealth in everybody else's pocket. So you are effectively being stolen from twice because yeah, and you're- and they buy up real estate and gold and- Well, yeah, yeah that's, exactly. items. that's the scam right there. They use, they use the people's belief that this currency is really money and has value, and then they use this fake monopoly money to buy things of real value, like real estate, mm-hmm like ammunition, you know, like whatever, whatever and things in the real world that people, you know, use real resources and real labor to produce. They just print up this magical fairy dust <laughs> fantasy money and they buy it all up. And, and then, you know, a, another great um, situation where I like to start the discussion on money and economics is playing Monopoly with somebody. <laughs> I play Monopoly and I say, what is the difference between this monopoly dollar bill and this dollar bill, <laughs> all right? I th- I think that's a great question, and people are like, well, that's legitimate. That you know, created by the government. Well, well it's just pe- it's a piece of paper with ink with p- pictures of dead presidents, and, and they happen to be most of the dead presidents, like like um, um Andrew Jackson. like like Andrew Jackson, right? Yeah, like like the, the somebody fought his whole life to, to oh, end yeah. the Bank of America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he uh, he he destroyed. The, I believe it was the second the second central bank in the country, um, and then I, th- I believe the which third, was a bona fide central bank. Yeah, and then the third yes. one was the Federal Reserve, right? So, so the this is actually yeah. the third time that the uh, that the bankers tried to establish their foothold and control the currency. Um, but um, do you think America would be? Com- do you think America would be completely different, like one eighty, if just the people just said no more Federal Reserve, and just shut it down and quit using the money oh yeah oh yeah definitely i mean it's a, it's a big confidence thing definitely you know people people are taught like this is this is part of the thing about government schools why it's so important that people go to government schools people are taught that the government is legitimate and whatever the government does is legitimate right it's the complete appeal to authority and the appeal to antiquity that most of this generation all we know is using dollars and cents that's all we know we have no link of gold to dollars, right? If you were if you were born before 1933, you would understand that that the, the currency was backed by gold. If you were born after, you have you would have no idea that it was backed by gold, and it would mean nothing to you. You know, gold has nothing to do with money. What are you talking about? It's just like you said, Jeremy. It's just in wrappers, chains, and and teeth and bracelets. You know, that's all. It's it's just jewelry, right? It's just jewelry. Stop. It's not money at all. And and another thing I like to bring up is um, a very simple concept. You know, I say you know take a dollar bill, and I say how much do you think it costs for the Federal Reserve to print this dollar bill, right? You know, ink, paper, and transportation, you know, around six cents, right? And I say, okay, how much do you think it costs to print uh, uh, and, and uh, put, uh, apply ink and paper and transportation on a hundred dollar bill? <laughs> and the answer is about seven cents. Why? Because it has an extra zero, right? A little more ink, okay? <laughs> and, then the, and then that alone just blows people's minds. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then yeah. like, all right, now, how easy is it to make gold or silver? And do you know how gold or silver is made? Right? There's two ways that I know of, right? One is a 
you know, the uh, supernova, explosion of a star or the death of a star, and the other one is two colliding neutron stars, right? So neither of which the federal government or the center or the, or the federal reserve is capable of doing <laughs> which not is yet a, at least which, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was gonna say give them time they'll, try, they'll figure it out <laughs> or, or, or not not even is capable of doing but they claim the authority and the right to you know fool the people that they're doing it um which is exactly the reason why if you look at every single war since the federal reserve was created the the um the convertibility of the dollar to gold was temporarily left and you know you see the massive printing of money you know fiat currency essentially to pay for the war right massive so it's only and as ron paul said right the the 20th century is no coincidence that the 20th century you know is a century of central banking and the century of world wars because it is only through central banking mandrake mechanism currency creation that war is enabled, that war is, is possible, because how are you going to pay the people? If you're going to pay them in gold or silver, that's extremely limiting. <laughs> you're going to run out, of, and, and it, let's say you pay them through taxing the citizens. Again, I think, uh, D Dave, you mentioned that in the last episode, right? You want to stop war, just just give a, give a tax, a war tax, apply that to their salary, and you're going to quickly see people, you know, protesting. Oh, oh war, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Go to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. IRS man comes to your house and says, hey, I need your kids, I need your wife, and I need you. Let's come out on the front porch real quick and sign your, uh, your, your contract saying that you're uh, beholden to pay this uh, debt on our war that we're going to wage with uh, the boogeymen and uh, the drug addicts and the, the – the, the, the people of the world. Yep, you see, you see the so social security disability. You know your four hundred and one k and war on terror. <laughs> on your, on your, on your yeah, stuff, I think it was uh, the just just the war uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. Not not to count Yemen, Somalia, Libya, etc. 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 That they're doing right now, just just Iraq and Afghanistan it was one hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars per person, and that's like uh, that's uh, even the people that aren't even born yet. That's the people that like if your if your wife's if you're listening to this and your wife's pregnant, the government has basically signed a a, a one hundred twenty five thousand dollar contract for your child while it's still in, in the womb for this this war on terror, and uh, supposedly I mean they just came out the other day. What did they say they they that the war on terror has not decreased any terroristic terror terroristic activities, and the creation of the NSA has not stopped one terrorist plot. Yeah, they, now, I don't they know they if get more funding every year. Yeah, I don't know if that's a lie. I don't know if they they've stopped a lot, and they just want to tell everybody they haven't stopped them. I, yeah, you, there, there's so much clouded mystery in it that you really don't know. Like the only thing you say is government is bad right now, and it needs to go away, but you really don't know exactly all what they're doing. I mean, there's no if they if they came out and told everyone what they were doing, people would be in the streets rioting. There they they would there would be a ten there would be a three hundred million man march on <laughs> Washington to kill all of them. So it, it just uh, what you were saying about every war is 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 free now because they hedge the government can wage war by just printing currency. There's a reason. I mean, <clears throat> there's a reason why the uh, there there was no war for what uh, three or four years while Bush was um, that that end of Clinton, uh, beginning of Bush, and then he got us into those those wars because all those military contracts were like, or, or all those military companies were like, hey, you know, and all the oil prices and all this, and they needed that shit to go down. They the the the, the military companies needed a reason to make. One hundred million dollar pilot or jet fighters and and all this and, you know these big aircraft carriers. If there's no war, then they they go tits up, and they you know and and people aren't just gonna say, hey, here's all this buttload of money to build this stuff that we don't need. Because at this point in time, all right, this is what I would like to ask any conservative or anybody that's like uh, minarchist or whatnot. Can they point out or name a country that would openly, with flags, attack the United States of America? They would, they would be wiped off the face of the planet in the next two weeks, three weeks. And then America would put in the government that they want there, 
and your society would be erased. So <laughs> there's no there's no country that could possibly attack the United States if they just maintained a purely defensive strategy. Not 900 bases across the world, you know, not 12 bases surrounding Iran, but they're the big boogeymans, you know. Uh, if there were just bases along the borders of the country, do you think anybody would attack? No, but how would you fund that military? It's like, it goes into that 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 fireman attitude. You know, if there was no if if the Federal Reserve wasn't stealing from everybody to, to make war to prop up its uh, corp his its corporations and itself, then they would all go they would all go bankrupt. You know? Well, most people, you know, that's actually you know, a common argument I, I, against, you know, people like ourselves in our position that, you know, you, you need the military to protect us. Well, they're not protecting us now. Like you said, that, you know, they could just easily do a completely defensive position uh, and save a heck of a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> uh, number one. Number two, they, you know, this the same people will say that it's, you know, even if they're if, even if they claim to be anti-war, they they think they need this stuff. And you know, when we bring up the the possible private privatization of such services, you know, everybody panics and says, "Oh, you know, somebody will take over." Well, no, because if you take away the central banks, like like we're, we've been discussing, if you take them away and they're not funding an army with fake money. War is ridiculously expensive. Who can afford to do that? I don't. Per I mean, I don't personally know anybody who can. And there's, there's not too many. You I mean, know, there's maybe a reason why Hitler had to keep invading countries, and well, and, yeah. and getting those tax bases. That was the only reason he was invading. Well, yeah, because you run, you run out of money eventually. It's not, it's not cheap. That's why the central banks are, are the like you know you said, Danilo. They're the key to, they're, they're the key to this, and that's. They, you know, the 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 industrial, uh, the military industrial complex relies on them just handing over money, um, and 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 giving them, you know, they're they're among the special interest groups, you know, the contractors and all that stuff. They're among the special interest groups that get the first crack at the new money before it loses its value. And, and as you said, as I think you said, Dave, you know, they automatically go out and buy all the important stuff, the stuff that can be used, you know, the armor, um, the bullets, you know, they, they build the tanks. Um, but again, the, the problem is if, if you don't have that, then they can't build these things. Um, you know that that what you what you were asking the the, the conservatives and the minarchists and the like yeah it's you I'll, I ask questions like that too and 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 they get befuddled because <laughs> they don't know how to they don't know how to live you know and that that drive to can keep convincing yourself that you're being protected um, by these interests. Uh, is it, it, it becomes harder with each passing day. Like, I don't even know how some of them do it anymore. It's like, how do you defend that? Um, yeah, you, you think know. any CEO at Boeing or, or Lockheed Martin or or any intelligence corporation gives a, f a flying shit about you? <laughs> like, no, they don't care about the safety of you. They care, care about the safety of themselves and the, the security of their financial endeavors. So... These people that the government su subsidizes and um, subcontracts out to do to do all this stuff, you know, Blackwater uh, or whatever it's called now, all these other things that they get they get them to do, you know, hey, we told them not to do that, but oh, we paid them, you know. <laughs> um, it, it's uh, it to think that America's army right now or our army well, or. You know, the army is unconstitutional, but whatever. Um, to think that the United States arms, armed forces are protecting this country at this point in time in history is a ludicrous notion. And that's the most non-sophist way I can ex say that without getting too temperamental or, or yelling or calling someone an idiot. But if you think <laughs> at this point in time that the United States military – Every facet of it is protecting the United States of America and not corporate interests. 
you really need to pull yourself away from you know your 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 Fox News, your 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 CNN, your your, your Wall Street Journal, whatever uh, your your <clears throat> your pastor or whoever's telling you this, and and really examine this and, and think about it, because <laughs> you, all you have to do is is follow the money, as I'm sure Danilo could probably explain. All you have to do is follow the money. Look at all these big corporations that would not be getting money if we weren't empire building. And people that that will sit there and say that America isn't empire building, name one other country that has nine was it 980 bases across the world at this point? <laughs> Don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Na- remember name the- one country. Na- like that you can't because there's none. Like even the evil Russia doesn't have that many. Yeah, what's what's amazing is that uh you know, not only is is the United States number one in terms of military spending, we spend more than the than the bottom, like the, than the next twenty five countries put together <laughs> in terms of. And not only are we the number one military spending, we're the number one arms dealer. So we arm all these countries that we're actually fighting, right? Yeah, they arm their boogeymen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They and, arm their bad guys. Like, uh, yeah. you want to know who funded the Taliban? America. You want to know who funded? <laughs> Uh, Al Qaeda, America. You want to know who funded uh, the Nazis? <laughs> America. So it, it just goes to show you that they need these wars to grow their state. They need. I mean, the, you know, I heard it my whole life, and I never really understood it. But you know, they say war is the health of the state, and the reason that is is because under the pretext of war. The state can do whatever it wants in the name of defense. It can intern thousands of Japanese people. It can collect all your gold. It can tax you at whatever rate it wants. If you believe that this nation, if you're a nationalist, an idiot, a useful idiot, if you're a nationalist and you believe that this country is protecting you and has your best interest in mind, go look at all the millions of people that died Fighting pointless wars. Go look at all the. Uh, I could go on and on. <laughs> let, let me let, let me bring the conversation back to money <laughs> really quick. I, I have another idea. I just I just thought of um, Mike Maloney um, made a great um, analogy to those people that say we need the Federal Reserve because as the as the population increases, we need to create money. You know, in conjunction with the population increasing. Which actually, I remember myself thinking that, like, you know, when I was trying to figure this stuff out, I'm like, you know what? Maybe Everybody gets maybe, a car. Yeah, maybe <laughs> if it just increases at the same rate as population, maybe then we'll reach parity. But no, it's not about it's not about how much money should we print. That's not the issue. It's it's not really, you know, how much money is in existence, right? The the issue is the fact that we have a central entity that claims a monopoly status on the printing of money, the control of the currency. Because, you know, one, one thing, he made an interesting idea. He said, he said, you can take one gold coin, you can put it then in a vault, right? Have, you know, lock it up, have security cameras on it. Nobody touches the gold coin. And then you can take the individual gold atoms, which is like, I don't know, like some, some enormous like <laughs> sextillion number, and and you can distribute that throughout the population, and you can give a serial number on each atom, right? And that would be a stable money, uh, monetary system because nobody would be able to inflate it at all. It would be it would remain constant, even if and you know what? If the population increases, and and the currency does not increase or the money does not increase, that's excellent because you know what that means? That's called deflation. Prices actually go down. And the currency that you're saving actually increases in value, which people have no idea what that means because that never happens <laughs> to so any what you're country need to, around the world. What you're saying is, is, is the government needs to find unobtainium, all right, <laughs> and then issue bond certificates for each individual atom of this unobtainium, and it's locked in a secure vault, Fort Knox. Well, 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 he's just he's just making an example that no, 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 no. I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know, I know. But so, I'm so, playing and, and playing is, devil's advocate. And this here. is also why Bitcoin is very valuable because it has a finite number of bitcoins that will ever be mined. Right? Was it 21 million? And so far, uh, yes. I, th- I think like 11 million. Have I think it's 36 mined. million. No, 21 was yeah. the oh, number. Oh, 21. Okay, yeah. my bad. So, so it has a finite number, and it's it's being mined slowly, and it's like. 
<clears throat> you need a, you need a computer that has you know um, special computing right powers and that and it and and I think every time a new Bitcoin is mined, it gets successively difficult, more difficult, more difficult. So, um, you know, th I think they said you're gonna we're gonna mine the last Bitcoin in like twenty the year twenty two something. <laughs> so, but but the idea is that it's stable and no. Um, central well, boring has, any uh, boring any uh, and then, and, technological and, advance, you know. Yeah, and then and then and then and then the other people like you, Jeremy. You said um, that gold and silver, they uh, the reason that people were using it for thousands of years is because it has intrinsic value, which which is actually the reason that Peter Schiff was saying. But but um, I, I think that's one aspect of it. You know, like gold. No, you know, no. Gold, gold yeah. you can use gold. You can use for jewelry. You can use it for you know fillings. You can use it for uh, various things. And silver has. Oh my God, silver is like. I, be, I believe Electro. it's like the second most the second most useful commodity next to oil right now in the world. Like silver is like massively useful. It's consumed. That's the difference between gold and silver. Gold is hoarded in central banks, and silver is consumed at a massive rate. Which is you another, can even eat silver. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Co colloidal silver, right? You can you can even it's it's medicinal. Uh, it has so many uses. You know, you know, hospitals and water filtration, solar panels, windows, so many so many things, and. And which is another reason why the the discrepancy between gold and silver right now, which is like, it, the price is like one one ounce of gold equals about um, seventy five ounces of silver. And historically, before nineteen thirteen, the the ratio was always about one to twelve. One ounce of gold equals twelve ounces of silver. And the reason was because that was the ratio that was in the ground, right? But now it's been so massively distorted by all this currency creation that it's now in a huge bubble and it's really about to burst and because there is so much there is so much we're just overflowing with these federal reserve notes and people just have no idea i can't believe it this they just no idea and, and people think that it's normal that 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 silver you know went from i think it went from like five dollars around year 2000 skyrocketed to like fifty dollars in 2011 and now it's like on a downturn uh it's like fifteen dollars eighty cents now and people don't they they don't question they're like what that that doesn't make doesn't make sense but um, okay you know <laughs> it's just a fact of life <laughs> it's just uh it's just it's just really funny you know because nobody nobody cares nobody thinks it has a real effect in in your life like why why should i buy this stuff what use is it to me now and and the way i look at it is like um it's like you know why would you get a fire extinguisher or even a gun why would you get a gun you know hopefully you won't have to use it now Right, but it's basically an insurance policy um, in case you do have to use it in case the government, you know, defaults on its debts, which is inevitable. You know, it's just um, it's just a matter of time now. Um, so, yeah, diversifying into anything else other than other than Federal Reserve notes is an extremely wise decision, and <laughs> I encourage everyone to do it because. Doesn't matter where you hold your Federal Reserve notes. If it's in the bank, if it's under your mattress, if it's in your hand, it will it will be deteriorating like termites are eating it in your hand. You are losing value every single day you hold it. You are losing value. Your 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 your, your wealth that you worked hard every single day of your life, it's being destroyed. <laughs> People yeah. don't really care. I felt I felt the same way when uh, Bitcoin went from when I bought it. It was like nine hundred a Bitcoin. Now it's worth like two fifteen ish, two twenty. Yeah. But they, after I read read about and 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 really thought about it, the the value of Bitcoin to the American dollar <clears throat> has a lot of different variables, and and it it really doesn't matter how much the Bitcoin is worth compared to the American dollar. It's how much will someone take, or what will they take for that Bitcoin. And, and, that's, and that's the other problem is we're all using the 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 dollar or the or fiat currency to measure everything else. We use fiat currency like everyone wants to know how much is gold worth, how much is silver worth, how much is a Bitcoin worth. No, you don't want to do that because fiat currency is the it's the perverted, it's the corrupted currency. You can't. It's like using a liar to to determine who's a truthful person. You know, <laughs> you can't do that. You have to use the the finite commodity to, to measure. The unlimited, the unlimited fantasy thing that we call fiat currency. So people have such a warped notion of money that they trust this thing that can be created billions and trillions at a whim. <laughs> Yet, you know, gold and silver that it says has very finite supply. They're like, you know, uh, I don't see what it could do for me <laughs> in my life. 
Yeah, well, I, I said earlier, you know, I, I think that's been done by design um, that people don't know these things. You know, we're not taught this stuff. And, and, and again, you, you said it to know the people that born after a certain time have no clue because they don't know any differently. Um, you know, which ties into one of our favorite fallacies, you know, the appeal to antiquity where it's that's just the way it's been. So why question it? Um, I would push back on, on one thing you said, though, um, about the gold and silver. Uh, for the average person, I, I would agree that that using it as, as sort of an insurance policy is a good thing. Uh, but the, for the more, you know, slightly more adventurous out there that are, that, that are getting into this, uh, it, it can be used. It, it can be used right now. Um, you know, you can, you know, if you want to go more of the agorist route and get away from Federal Reserve notes altogether, um, you know, that's a scary proposition for a lot of people because you, you know, when you sit down and think about it, you know, how many things do you buy on a regular basis? You know, how many stores do you go to? Um, how many, you know, bills and or regular purchases do you have set up on automatic payments on credit cards? You know, all these things that you, you're used to having using uh, Federal Reserve notes or some form of that, you know, some form of, the, of a credit that's a put, that you think is tied to Federal Reserve notes. Um, that will uh so so when the, the currency is about to collapse you go get 10 credit cards right and you max them all out on buying silver and gold right and then you bury the silver and gold somewhere and then all of it collapses and then when you get out you're a rich man right <laughs> yeah that'll work you just no? gotta time you just gotta time it right you just gotta um, time <laughs> well yeah but what I, what I was saying is you know, i mean because they're just gonna get bailed out anyways right well, in, until they can anymore, like you know, like like we said. <laughs> I'm just they, joking, guys. Don't the, do that. The, that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, um, but no, I mean, like I said, it, it it can be used now. There are there are people that trade in it. There are people that will that will accept it as payment. You know, same thing with Bitcoin. You know, as you said, Danilo, di diversification is a wonderful thing. Um, you know, don't you know there there are there are, there are people that are willing to play with their money and put it in the stock market. You know, I'm not somebody like that because not that I have enough money to be doing that. But even if I did, uh, you know, I'm a little too wary of that being, you know, as manipulated as it always and is. And it's gone. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> um, but with gold and silver, or, you know, and and or bitcoins or 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 any you know burgeoning cryptocurrency, um, any other precious metals. Um, anything else that, you know, any commodity, you know, any solid, you know, hard commodities that you can get your hands on and, and keep um, is good for insurance. But, you know, to <laughs> to to hasten the collapse, um, you know, one way to do that um, and, and prepare yourself at the same time is to acquire these metals and use that find people you can trade with for everyday items so you it's almost like training yourself to use these things especially for people that are new to this you know you get used to using it you get used to using it to purchase things um and the more and more people that just stop using frns the the, the quicker it will it, you know the value will collapse on it because no nobody will want to use them um and then they'll be sitting you know the government will be sitting on this huge stockpile that nobody wants uh, you know, I'm sure people across the world will try to buy it because they'll be still be stuck in the propaganda cycle. Um, but you can use it now. You know, I have I, I have friends that that use it um, on a regular basis. Um, you know, there's there's been stories already in the past couple of years of of people that have tried to go using ju just Bitcoin, you know, only, and they found a way to survive. Um, you know, traveling um, and paying for everything in Bitcoin, like things like this are possible. It's just you have to be willing to restrict yourself a little bit in the, in the present um, yeah. because th there are some people that won't take, you know, that, that, that insist on cash or insist on, you know, you paying for a check or the bigger corporations are always, you know, anybody connected to the bank is always happy when you pay with a check because then no money actually has to go anywhere because, you know, people think when they, they write a check to somebody, oh, you know, the bank transfers that money over to their bank and then they get that. No, there's there's no transfer. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a button. That's all it is. That's the transfer. It's ones and zeros that gets pressed. So they love it when you use checks. Um, but you can you can start doing this now and that will... You know, like I said, it it has a twofold effect. It it gets you used to doing that, um, and it, it may just hasten the collapse and, and make everybody better off in the long run, um, because 
it will it, it will fall and like dave said what no it doesn't matter where those dollars are when it falls you have you have absolutely nothing sitting in your hand you know it's gone and uh and then people will panic and and that's that's a scary proposition when when everybody when when all the people who haven't bothered to prepare when all the people who have you know, believe the the rhetoric that that people like us are crazy or extremists or or you know the tinfoil hatters. Um, you know, when all of those people who believe those lies, <laughs> when the when the dollar finally collapses, there's going to be a lot of freaked out people because <laughs> they're not going to know what to do. They're not going to. They'll be lucky if they can figure out how to barter on their own, much less do anything else. Yeah, and um, then they're going to get mad and riot and try to steal people's that ad actually did plan. Yeah. But uh, no, I've been I've been working on. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it on a podcast, but just diversifying my um, savings and 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 acquiring silver, acquiring Bitcoin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you know, a lot of people think it's like, okay, I've got ten thousand dollars in my savings account. Let me just go buy ten thousand dollars with Bitcoin. No, don't do that. <laughs> Take a hundred dollars out of that thousand, that ten thousand dollars every month, and buy a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. Take a hundred dollars out and buy a hundred dollars worth of silver every month, and you create a buffer where you're always going to have fiat in your in your savings, and you're always going to have real money, <clears throat> real currency with you, as well. And I would also like to say get ammunition. I know that sounds crazy to probably some of you northerners or people out in California or whatnot, but there's a large part of this country that you don't see that will trade food, water, gas, whatever for bullets. I know that sounds crazy to the average person, but that is fact. They don't they don't, they're not going to want your bitcoins, they're not going to want your gold or silver, they're going to want bullets. So do that, even if it's you're buying a hundred rounds a year. Ten years, you got a thousand rounds. So, yeah, Jeremy, that's a that's a really good point um, about the the you know the agorism, right? Trading uh, using using this stuff now, and and I think that brings back. Um, I was talking to Samuel Kovac, who is a Bitcoin specialist and uh, lecturer. And that was one of the questions that he answered for me was, you know, people are saying, well, look at and, and Dave, you just mentioned like I bought it when it was 900. Now it's 200. Look at all the money I lost. Well, if you're looking at it as a way to make a profit, don't do that. <laughs> and the same thing with gold, silver. If you're looking at it to make a profit, don't look at it like that. Right. Either you buy it for long term as an insurance or you can buy it now and use it now. Trade with it now, right? Then you're not really losing anything, right? You're just you're just converting your wealth or your your value into different forms, right? And uh, in that sense, it's a wonderful thing to get used to doing to get out of the um, yeah the Federal Reserve uh, Federal Reserve note system. Um, and and so I, I really I encourage people to do that because you have to we, we we have to start thinking you know independently of of the government controlled currency and i think i think i remember they were saying the imf is uh is like like uh, they're saying you know they're trying to do this special drawing rights or or the, or it's like the, the currency that's supposed to come after um the uh you know when the when the us dollar falls but but it really doesn't matter because it's like the only people that suffer when a, when a, a wealth transfer occurs or or an economic collapse are the middle class. Those are the people that always suffers. You know, you know wherever, you know wherever the middle class goes, so goes the country. Basically, I mean, and, yeah. There's a reason why billionaires are buying tons of gold. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, um, like I like to describe to people also the um, the hyperinflation in, in Weimar Republic. That's a great example of of what happens when central banks just go crazy printing money. And 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 interestingly enough. It was not even only the central banks that was printing money. Anybody who had a printer was printing money. Everybody was printing. And, and, and what was amazing was I think it only took five years of that. It was like between 1919, um, 1919, gold was one ounce. One ounce equaled um, 100 German marks, right? And then by the end, 1924, it was one ounce of gold equaled a hundred trillion German marks, <laughs> right? And yeah. and it was so gold was so valuable at that peak that you could you could use I believe it was twenty five ounces of gold 
to buy one ounce of commercial real estate in the city of, um, I, I guess it was Weimar, <laughs> the city of, of Germany, you know, which is amazing. Like imagine how much, how much would, it, would, it, would a block of, of uh, commercial real estate cost in Manhattan <laughs> right now? Oh. Just imagine that, right? <clears throat> and you can imagine, like, like I, I, I kind of did this calculation. Let's say, for example, one block in Manhattan costs $20 million, right? Something like that, let's say. No. That, <laughs> 200 I mean, million. I mean, all right. Yeah, I, like, I was, I was going to say a, blo a, blo a Manhattan block, you'd probably be lucky to get one for $500 million. All right, all right. Uh, Dep no, it's, depending it's probably, on the, depend yeah, depending on the area. Yeah, it's probably about $4 billion, yeah. 4 or $5 billion. All right, whole, all right. So then block, I'm, yeah. I'm very conservative then. <laughs> but but yeah. I just but just just for the sake of argument, if we said it was 20 million, then that would be yeah. for 25 ounces of gold, that would be about 800 thousand dollars per ounce, right? <laughs> if it was 20 million, so just calculate that out for 500 billion, right? So it's just a massive amount of a massive amount of value because the thing that Mike Maloney says, and this is really awesome that people have to understand, is wealth is never destroyed. Wealth is only transferred. It is always transferred. You cannot destroy wealth. You can destroy the currency, the medium of exchange by hijacking it, by, over, by printing it, by controlling it, by regulating it. You cannot destroy wealth, right? Wealth is something real that we all, you know, you tangibly create wealth with our hands, right? Products and services. That's real wealth. You can't destroy that. So, so if we put our, 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 um, our wealth into something real and tangible like precious metals that cannot be printed at a whim, it will, it will just be transferred to people who have tangible assets, whatever those tangible assets are. Yeah, I mean if you, if you think a, a Rockefeller is ever going to – if you think a Rockefeller is ever going to go hungry, you're, you're, you're losing your mind. Yeah. Yeah, like, J, J, J.P. Morgan, I believe uh, in 1910, right three years before the Federal Reserve was created, he said uh, gold is money, you know, always has been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I it. mean, uh, if you're a billionaire now, if you you're going to have financial advisors saying, "Hey, you need to get out of this currency. You're going to go get into a currency that's going to keep you on top, or you're going to get into pressure metal, or you're going to buy real estate or whatnot. You're going to your wealth is going to be retained. It doesn't matter what happens to any currency. So this this whole idea, this this communistic idea that you can take wealth from people. And redistribute it is it, the people who want to be wealthy in this world are going to be wealthy uh, that, that have the means of attaining it. You know, the, 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 there was something that I think Zig Ziglar said, if you know who that is. Zig Ziglar said, if we took every every ounce of if we took every ounce of wealth out of everybody's pockets, whatever you wanted to qual call it, and you distributed it across every other person on the entire planet. The same people within a certain amount of time would have all that money back because they know how to get it. They know how to get all that wealth back. So it's one of those things where, you know, <laughs> a sucker is born every minute and a, a fool is easily departed with his, his money. <laughs> so it's one of those things that you can sit here and you can, you can say, yeah. The, the 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 rich are evil, but there's always going to be rich people in this world, and and rich is not something that you can actually certifiably define. You can put up parameters and say that's what rich is, but rich is a subjective. Uh, it's a subjective uh, terminology, yeah. and <clears throat> so this whole idea of of wanting what your neighbor has because you don't have it. Or wanting what another man has is 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 just a bitch mode play in my, in my opinion, and that's a lot of what's wrong with this world. <laughs> you know, the richest man in the world could could look at somebody that makes nothing, that digs ditches all day, and that guy goes home and he's happy and he'll be envious of it. But the guy digging ditches and going home and he could look at the richest guy in the world and say, "Yeah, I want that." You just got to be happy. I guess. You got to find out what makes you happy. And and money isn't evil. Wealth isn't evil. What you do as humans to your other fellow humans can be evil or good. You know, you, Dave, you were saying that that uh, you know the you know again that that everybody hates the rich, um, and how, how that is a subjective thing. It, it's funny because you know when the when the occupiers were out screaming about the one percent, um, and you know we are the ninety nine percent. 
Um, they kind of apparently left out some figures um, because they were just referring to what's going on here uh, in, in the states. Uh, I think I think the actual numbers that came out was you know worldwide to to, com- to be considered in the one percent is anybody making over thirty four thousand dollars a year. So <laughs> yeah, on world terms, no, no, no. If you have if you have ten thousand dollars in your bank account, you're in the one percent. <laughs> really? Well, yes. I, well, no. I'm I'm just talking about like salary wise. Those those numbers came out last. I saw those a couple times last year, and it's that the one percent make thirty four thousand dollars a year, like worldwide. <laughs> so people that complain about the rich like <laughs> and you know and are, and are mad that they, you know they're only making fifty thousand dollars a year. It's like yeah, no, as they're calling their heck, girlfriend on their iPhone. It just you, you know, there's people heck, out there that can't even shower but once a month. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, exactly. Like they're, fuck off. That's my one F. <laughs> <laughs> there, there. You know, you, you make you make that kind of money. You're actually a lot better off than other people. So again, you, you, the anger is always directed in the wrong place. You need to direct it at the. You know, if you want to be mad at anybody, be mad at the bankers um, who are who are, you know, manipulating the system. But don't be mad at the guy who's worked his tail off to make some money. You know, build a business from nothing. You know, that that's the one thing that every you know, mo- so many people that complain about corporations and 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 the I think e- inherited you know, the e- wealth is another thing that they get uh, uh, angry about, which doesn't really make much sense to me. Yeah, because if they made a bunch of money or won a bunch of money, and or and then you know we're getting later on in life and we're going to hand it over to their kids, they would think nothing of it. But it's when somebody. Oh else yeah, yeah. I mean, you ask any commie that's sitting there saying, you know, that's not fair. You know, John D. Rockefeller's son did nothing to obtain all that wealth and has so much power from it just from being born there. But if we swapped those roles, would that person have that same sentiment? I would. I would say that would be very hard and very virtuous for them to have that same sentiment. Almost impossible. You know, if, yeah. if you ask any occupier, quote unquote, or any socialist, hey, I'm going to give you a billion dollar bank account and a penthouse in Manhattan and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can do with it whatever you want and then just watch them for a year and see what they do. They're not going to go move to the Congo and build up villages. They're, <laughs> they're not going to, they're not going to go to, starving people and give them money and food they're going to live their life how they see fit and it's one of those things where no one can practice what they preach until they're walking in that that shoe those shoes of someone who that they're demonizing well yeah because it's a heck of a lot easier to 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 scream about redistributing wealth when it's not your wealth you're talking about um when it's somebody else's it's, it's a lot easier um so you know as to to finish off i i'll just you know i'll reiterate what i said earlier you know diversify is is a, diversifying your your assets that you have now is a good idea um you know i i would encourage people to explore agorism uh learn about it you know see what's going on with that and uh again try to direct your anger at the right place um if people you know if 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 you're upset with the with the wealth situation, you're upset with the you know even as Dave was saying with the inherit you know, people with the inherited money. Well, try to realize that most of those people who made that those what you consider ungodly amounts of money, a lot of them required government subsidies over the years, required special tax breaks, required all these things to get where they are. So if you take that out of the equation. It you know it levels the playing field a lot more, you know to point to another thing Dave said about the Zig Ziglar quote. Um, yeah, there's a good chance that will happen, but the people that will reacquire it if the playing fields are level or leveled, shall I say? Should I say um, the people that will reacquire it are the hardworking ones, the the true entrepreneurs, the people that think of things, you know that 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 have the the idea men. Those be, will be the ones. That will acquire it, and if you don't have a government to run to uh, for subsidies, if something goes wrong, you tend to be a little more careful with what you do have. Um, so, in, instead of thinking of terms of of money as you know what's in your pocket, um, try to learn what money actually is. You know, to go back to what Danilo said at the beginning, the difference between money and currency. There is a difference. You know, people should learn that. And 
you know, try not to get stuck in this 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 cycle where it's the the U.S. dollar is is all that matters, and and we need that. Um, you know, and and if you know when you hear people like us speak about getting rid of the government, it's oh no, what are we going to do? They'll just a- anybody can print money then. Well, yeah, that's kind of the point. You know, decentralize it, open up options. You know, the, I mean, yeah, the more- there's, yeah. There's a reason why Amazon has Amazon bucks. There's a reason why eBay has PayPal. There's a reason why all Walmart lets you buy gift cards. They're trying to get you to use their currency, essentially. Yeah. Exactly, and that you know anybody could make a currency. It's a it's a matter of how many people will adopt it for everyday use that gives it its value. So you know people are afraid of that. People need that conformity. People need that that one thing to look to. Okay, government prints the money. Okay, we know that. You know, look how that's turned out. <laughs> look at all the figures we've talked about through this show, and uh, if you think having more options is a bad idea. Um, you probably lead a very, very boring life. <laughs> <laughs> you should move to North Korea. <laughs> yes. yes. I'll, uh, I'll just wrap up and, and, and this will just be a question from anybody that hears this. If you, if you want to answer it on YouTube or, or Facebook, whatever, anytime you want to call someone a greedy capitalist, I want you to name them this, not this f- fictitious person that you have built up in your head you know the guy with the monocle and the and the, the, the cigar and the the top hat like i want you to say that person is a greedy capitalist and then i'm going to shit all over that by saying that that person used government to obtain their wealth in most cases i mean there's there's a few that haven't but you have to realize that a lot of people especially socialists and communists that hate the wealthy, they 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 pine over the idea of government letting that wealth get redistributed or, or using government as a tool to redistribute that wealth. Who do you think controls the governments? You know, the quote is, "You're never going to be able to weigh, uh, vote away one dollar from a rich man's hand because he can pay the person who counts the votes." Hmm. So. <laughs> Think about what you're saying before you say it. Don't just don't just repeat rhetoric that you've heard. And know that the true enemy is government intervention, government force. That is the problem. And to get any of your communistic ideas in place, you have to use force, which we can do a whole episode on that. <laughs> but that's all I have. If you if you want to call someone a greedy capitalist, give me a name. We'll look them up. We'll search up. I guarantee you that they did not use voluntary means to obtain those those large sums of money. Yep, no, I tend to agree. Most of the time, that is true. Um, all right, I'll finish up. Uh, I, w- I want to mention, uh, Jeremy. You were mentioning about the um, the love of money. I wrote an article a while ago. It's called. Uh, uh, is is money the root of all evil? And uh, <laughs> and I and I see when when somebody posts something about a similar question, you know, the money is the root of all evil. I always get or I always see these Christian statists who comment underneath and say, "No, the Bible says it's the love of money that is the root of evil, not you know, not money. It's the love of money." And and I would say I would even counter that and say, "No." Even the love of money is not evil because <laughs> in order to become a successful entrepreneur, you really have to love money, I think. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like um, you know, if you really, you know, you have to please your customer, of course. You have to give them a good product and a good service, but you also have to want to <laughs> earn a large amount of money. Like, like that's the whole incentive to being an entrepreneur is to become wealthy, right? Uh, you know, if, if you, and, and Dave, you know, if, you, if you're talking about somebody who has achieved their wealth, through providing uh, value in society, then that's a wonderful thing, and they love money. <laughs> and what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. So I would I wouldn't even say the love of money is the that's not even the root of all evil, you know, because again, money is just a tool. It's an inanimate object, and just like anything else, somebody can misuse it, can hijack it, and use it for their own base ends. And to the detriment of everyone else. And if though if that group of people happens to be in government, I'm sorry, but every single time that has happened, it's led to disaster. And another interesting thing is, I was reading uh, this guy 
um, uh, I think it was the Daily Reckoning, which is a really pretty cool website uh, I used to follow. And and he, this guy gave his editor, he's like, I, w- I want you to do this this project. Go and research all the fiat currencies that have ever been in existence in history and start from A, and I want you to go all the way to Z. <laughs> Just tell me all the fiat currencies in existence, right? He All he got to was the B, the B fiat currencies, and, and basically what they wanted to discover is what happened to them and why did they fail, right? And and what he discovered was, you know, he just got into the Bs and it was like 775 fiat currencies. He just, he just got into the Bs, right? And and they all failed. None of them survived. Zero, you know, completely collapsed. And pretty much the same thing, you know, same reason, you know, uh, government control, <laughs> you know, Inflation, hyperinflation, collapse, wealth transfer. <laughs> Every single time, there is no point in history where a fiat currency has survived. And the and the average lifespan. This is a very interesting fact that Mike Maloney brought up. The average lifespan of a fiat currency is about thirty to forty years. So if you look even in, in U.S. history from the Federal Reserve, every 30 to 40 years, there was a monetary system change, you know, either, you know, the, the, the um, you know, change from the convertibility of gold to FDRs, you know, the bailout in 1933, and then you had the Bretton Woods system, and then you had that until you had the, uh, the, uh, Nixon, the Nixon shock of 1971, then you had the petrodollar, right? So now we're in the petrodollar, and that will come to an end, and we are actually around, what, what are we, like 40, 44 years now. Right since the petrodollar has been created, so we are due for a new currency. We're, we are we're past due. due. We're past due. We're past due for a new currency. So yeah, the government is five trillion dollars in debt from the war on terror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're we're like just we're like having a party here at the expense of our children's prosperity and our grandchildren's prosperity. We are stealing their prosperity to fund our. Um, you know, actually, they are stealing our. Like, our kids to fund their wars. Exactly. <laughs> well said. I mean, I don't like to use the word "our," right? The collective, but it's you know. not my government. I <laughs> yeah, have exactly. no say in it. <laughs> I'll just speak to us three in this in this in this uh, conversation. <laughs> our well, Dave's future kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so don't I hope, exist. I hope it won't that. exist. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. So. So I hope everyone enjoyed this conversation on money. Um, there's a lot more we could talk about. Maybe we'll do another episode on, you know, um, you know, other, uh, you know, wealth cycles or, or uh, you know, the business boom and bust. You know, Keynesian economics is just a, you know, Austrian economics is just a fascinating topic to to learn about, you know, um, and just, you know, people educate yourself <laughs> because because, you know, if you're dealing in this stuff every day, you might as well know. You might as well want to know where it comes from, and you, and you might as well want to know what gives it value, because once the hyperinflation occurs, and it is a real thing, like you talk to people in other countries where it has occurred, like Colombia, like Zimbabwe, like recently, and and even I'm from Peru, right? My cousin, he he remembers in Peru when the sole, right? Now it's like um, the nuevo sole, but before it was just the sole. When they converted that. My my cousin, he says he remembers his father with this pile of paper currency, and he's just sitting he's sitting in his kitchen just looking at. It. He's like, you know what? This is all worthless. All of this is worthless. <laughs> I think I think that's what's going to happen in the yeah. U, in the EU right now. So. Uh, I would say within the next probably ten years, because yeah, right now they're trying to prevent the countries from pulling out and not accepting a euro. <clears throat> if that happens, then the euro is, is kaput. Yeah, yeah, it's all it's all on a downward trend. I mean, it's like I, I like to make the comparison. You know, it, it, you know, people say the dollar is so strong. You know, you should put your money in the dollar. No, it's like all the currencies are like falling, except the dollar is a little bit higher now, but it's still falling because it's the it's only currency bit. allowed to be traded by OPEC nations. Yeah, it's backed by the might of the of the mil- U.S. military. Basically, that's the only thing that gives it you know um value you know because they're forced to use it but there are many many countries that are now opting out of the u.s dollar and they are um they they, get quickly invaded and retrained yeah they are but but i'm telling you the BRICS nations brazil russia india china south africa uh, australia so many countries right now thanks for reminding me about this i want everyone that's listening to this podcast go look up what's happening up in brazil and cuba right now where they're with their uh you know, in Cuba, they have the anarcho capitalistas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's a big movement growing over there. Uh, and in Brazil, they have these huge libertarian uh, 
we want free markets. We want this uh, push that's happening right now that no one in the United States uh, media is talking about. And uh, the, uh, you know, America is supposed to be the bastion in the world of free markets. It just uh, blows my mind that none of this is being talked about on these free market uh, news uh, corporations. So <laughs> it just, uh, woo, it's, it's exciting. I mean, yeah. it. <laughs> I'm not saying Brazil's going to become some libertarian uh, paradise, but what I'm saying is, is if Brazilians and Cubans are figuring this out, why aren't you? Yeah, do your research, learn economics, learn about money, read history, true history. Okay, forget about your government propaganda history, <laughs> and read some books, people. All right. <laughs> Actually, I saw what one of my friends, Nima, Nima Fadati, posted as in, uh, on, on his on his uh, page. He's, it's like a, a a poster that was plastered near a a, a university. It's like read motherfucking books every single day. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Read books. <laughs> read a book. Read a book. Read a motherfucking so, book. <laughs> All right, so thank you very much. I'm uh, guessing you guys haven't heard that song. <laughs> no. <laughs> buy some Dave. land, motherfucker. Buy some land. <laughs> All right, Dave. Fuck you're spinning over your, rims. <laughs> you're, you're over your F limit, Dave. Uh, yeah, I'm way <laughs> over it now. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Uh, you can uh, donate to us. Um, we accept fiat, <laughs> silver, gold, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin. It will quickly turn that fiat into silver. Ammo, ammo, uh, guns, anything that you wish to donate to help our cause. You can mail all the ammo you want to me. <laughs> <laughs> talking about uh, talking about liberty and freedom is fun, but it's not free because money is time, right? I mean, <laughs> time is money. Money is time, and. Um, you know, we all have uh, we all have to deal with the finite nature of our uh, existence. So that's the thing. We're devoting time to this. We're not devoting time to other things, right? <laughs> Fundamental economic concepts. So thank you very much for listening. Seeds of Liberty podcast, and uh, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Thanks for listening, Peace. guys.